This is a tutorial on how to use the detail template provided. When you open up the detail template, the first thing you'll see are these three sections. The first being the scale conversion table to the left. In the middle, you'll see a series of detail frames. And on the right, you'll see standard hatches and symbols that we use to build consistency across all the details that we're going to create in this file. Now, the very first thing you want to do anytime you use a template is to do a file save as. I've already done that, but you would do this through clicking File, Save As, or the Save As icon in the upper left corner. Doing a Save As allows you to preserve uh, one original version of the detail template for each time you start a new project. Now, in this AutoCAD file, you'll begin to create your details in another portion of model space. I tend to do that in the positive positive uh, portion of the Cartesian coordinate plane, which is the upper right. You'll see that the original details that I create tend to be uh, colorless and have just basic hatches. Uh, we'll use continuous line weights uh, just in that creation, but I want to get the general size and we'll come back and add colors which represent line weights and then adjust those particular line weights to dashed lines uh, and so forth. The first thing we want to do after we've got the general idea of what that detail is going to look like and the general size is we're going to go to our layout page. You'll notice on the layout page there is a title block on the right side, as with any traditional construction documents, and you would complete that uh, specific to your project. You also see nine viewports right here. And this is uh, the most details that you would be able to fit in this template are nine details that would represent a single viewport frame. Now what we'll also talk about is the ability to use one detail and to put it into four frames, or in some cases you could do one master plan and put it into all nine frames. In this instance, I'm going to zoom in to the upper left. We always do our construction details like we're reading a book. Start at the top and go left to right, middle left to right, and bottom left to right. And that's how the numbering will work as well. So naturally, we're going to start in the upper left, and we're going to double click inside of this viewport and find the first detail that we've created. We want to size it up roughly uh, to the size of this viewport. We want to leave room for dimensions and additional leaders, also just the um, title that will go underneath that detail. So we'll try a few known scales at first. We might try half inch, seems a little small. Go all the way up to one inch equals a foot, or potentially even larger, one and a half inch. I think this will work for our first detail. Once we have that general idea of the size of the detail that we want to create, we'll double click out of this and go back to model space, knowing that we've used one and one half inch equals a foot as the scale. Now, this is when we'll come back to the detail template. We know that we will start in the middle and we know that we've used the single viewport uh, based on our layout. We've only used one of these. And so we're going to select and copy the single viewport frame here. It's important to copy so that we can make sure that we preserve the original components of the detail template. And so we'll copy this up near our detail right here. We'll then come down to our conversion table and find one and one half inch equals a foot. And the conversion for this is eight. That'll be important to remember, not just for the detail frame, but also for the standard hatches as well. We'll select the detail frame, scale, click any portion as the base point. I'm going to use the bottom left. And instead of clicking again to determine uh, the scale, we're just going to type in a scale factor of 8 and hit enter. We'll notice that the frame now fits nicely around our detail. We'll do the same thing with the standard symbols and hatches. We'll copy this. Bring it up slightly above the detail. And scale this with a scale factor of 8. Then grab these components and just for Clarity, when we get several details in here, I want to move it relatively close to the detail that we're going to be working on. Now, the standard symbols, hatches, will allow us to create some consistency in size across all of our drawings. You'll see on the left we have detail layers that we can use. We have 
uh, a layer devoted to text, a screening layer at 50%, another screening layer at 75%, uh, an extra light, which will be our red, light, medium, all the way down to an extra heavy. And so we can grab these standard line weights and begin to apply them to the detail itself. Certain areas that we want to be very light, say a dense hat, dense hatch, we might use that gray color. But for the most part, this is going to be specific to the lines themselves. We also have a series of hatches that we can use. We can grab the crushed rock and apply it. We can grab the compacted subgrade hatch, apply it as well. I'll also apply the compacted subgrade to this, but then we'll rotate it at an angle of 45 just to differentiate it as undisturbed soil versus compacted soil. We'll continue to match properties of the hatches and the line weights until we've completed this detail. At this point it's time to put some key dimensions onto this detail. For the most part we'll put dimensions on one or two sides of the detail uh, and reserve the other two sides for notes about materials or certain specifications uh, specific to that detail. In this case, we'll start with the dimensions. And if we go back to our detail template that we've scaled up, notice that the dimensions actually have not changed. Uh, they remain a really small size and one that's not appropriate for this detail. So what we're going to have to do is type properties. And we'll pull up the properties. We'll be able to click on these individual dimension lines. In the properties, you'll see that the dimension style right now is currently set to linear. We'll pull that down and we'll find the specific uh, dimension style that is appropriate for our detail size. They're all named by the actual scale that we'll be using. In this case it's one and one half inch linear. We can match properties at this point by typing MA and actually painting these properties onto the other dimensions that are in our detail template. Now, another way to actually do this is to simply type dim style and find that one and one half inch dimension style and actually set that as the current dimension style. We'll have to redo that for every detail that we use. And so we're actually going to go that approach. We'll say set current and close. Now for doing dimensions we've got uh, several different types of dimension that we can create. We'll start with dim linear and begin to create our first dimension, snapping from endpoint to midpoint in this case. It would have been more appropriate to snap to this endpoint. We'll do the same thing again with dimension linear and select this point and the top of our concrete. We want to make sure to align all of our dimensions and organize them in a pretty standard fashion. Once we have some basic dimensions in, we'll want to begin to label certain components within the detail itself. In this case, we'll want to use the leader. We could copy this text over or, uh, similar to once we've set the dimension style, we can type in the leader command itself, select a point, We'll click our first point. I'm going to turn on my ortho to get a straight line for the second piece. Simply click out in space. I'll then hit enter and begin to type in the first line of text. Once we hit enter, we can begin to type the second line of text, any specific details. If we wanted to call out any specific type of aggregate, or any additional details associated with these leaders.
It will allow you to keep entering additional lines, but once you have decided that you're done, you can simply hit enter one more time and it will put that leader information off to the side. We'll continue to put in notes uh, to finish the rest of this detail. After you finish labeling your detail, you'll want to verify that the dimensions, the labels, uh, even the line weights uh, and text don't compete with one another and this might take uh, several versions. You'll also want to do test prints to make sure that it reads well uh, when printed out. Uh, so this will be a uh, back and forth process as you uh, work with construction details. At this point though we'll uh, stay where we are with this current iteration of the detail. We'll begin to adjust the uh, detail frame. By clicking on it you'll see that it pulls up uh, an attribute editor. And from here, you can begin to change the name of the detail, the scale that we're working with, and some of the other components. The detail title, we'll call this one Brick Banding in Lawn. We'll also go to the scale and change it from 1 inch equals question mark. Also adjust the graphic scale for each of these details in the bottom right. The way that this graphic scale works is you would simply do a distance measurement from the very left side to the first quarter mark. In my case this is two inches. Now this will vary based on the type of uh, conversion scale that you've used. So each time you use the uh, detail template and you scale up your detail frame, you'll need to measure this. So in this case, this is a two inch gap, which represents one fourth of it. So what I'm going to do is again, click on the detail frame to pull up the attribute editor. Now, these numbers work from left to right. Uh, they correspond from bottom to top here. So I'm going to grab the very first one and make it zero inches. I'll grab the second one, we determined that that was two inches. I'll grab the third, which will double the two and that will become four inches, and then finally eight inches. And we can confirm this by doing a distance from the zero inch to the very end, and it should read eight inches and correspond with our graphic scale. We'll finally want to change the number for this. And this might change depending on where your detail is on the page. For mine being the upper left, we're going to change that value to 1. Now when I come back to my layout page, you'll notice that uh, my detail is showing up in this first viewport that we've been using. What I'm going to do to make sure I center it up, we can kind of eyeball it to center it in here, but uh, because the detail template puts this outer frame around it, I can just type Z space for zoom. It will allow me to click on the endpoint here, as well as the endpoint here, and it will fit that detail exactly to uh, that viewport. Also, can, we'll look down here to confirm that our scale is what we're saying it is, which is one and one half inch equals a foot. We'll double click outside to finish that viewport. Now as we mentioned earlier, there are different uh, size details that you might be creating. Let's say in one instance we might want to use all four of these blocks uh, just for one single detail. This might be a very large complicated detail. And so the first thing we would do is just grab the viewports uh, that we're not going to use. We'll simply delete those. We'll grab this viewport and stretch it to that entire size. At this point what I'm going to do is come up and find maybe one of my other details that would be more appropriate. Let's go with this larger one. And again, go through the process of finding the right scale for this. Might try 1 8 inch is drastically too small, so we're going to jump way up and go 1 inch equals a foot. And that actually looks a lot closer to what we want for this particular detail. 
We'll then double click outside of this, go back to model space, and look down at my detail frames. Now in this case, this and the bottom left, the very first one we used, represents one single block. This one would represent two blocks high. This one would represent three blocks high. In this case, uh, we're going to use the two block wide and two block high, which is what we ended up using in our detail template. I'll copy this up and place it near our detail. Also come back down and look at the conversion scale that we used, which is one inch equals one foot. And we have a conversion scale of 12. So we're going to come back up to the detail template. I'm going to select this and scale it up 12 and place that around the detail. We'll continue the same process that we used on the previous version by taking the detail symbols and hatches, copying them up, and a scale conversion of 12 and complete any information um, and details that we want to put on this specific detail in here. There are a few final components of the detail template that will be useful as you are creating construction details. One particular area of the detail symbols that we haven't talked about, these three right here will be used as callouts uh, to reference other details, whether in site plans or in other details themselves. In this case, I'm going to grab this particular one, make sure that I copy it over and place it next to my detail. I'll then create a new line, snap that line perpendicular, and match properties. What this callout will do is reference this as a separate detail. And we'll reference it by calling out the detail number at the top and the page number at the bottom. To change both of those, we just simply double click and you can cha change those in the attribute editor. Uh, the other lines will be used to call out for section cuts. You also have this additional symbol right here, which is used to denote elevations in construction drawings. And this, which is a line that breaks the end of a detail and just represents that that detail is continuous and moves on beyond the edge of the detail shown. In this case, see that those are used vertically here to indicate that this paver detail continues uh, to the right and to the left and that is not just confined uh, in this small space. You can see it is used heavily on a lot of these details that you will be referencing and creating. So this is uh, the bulk of the information for the detail template. You'll use this to create construction documents um, and reference this tutorial uh, as you continue to uh, build these documents in these courses.